fitna so that you don't become someone or something that a shaitan has the ability to play. Second of all, concerning the trials and tribulations and the times of the fitna, personal or other than that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us something very, very important to do. A minhaj. A minhaj. And that is, he told the people about the fitna that was going to happen. How the Muslims were going to start killing each other. How the non-Muslims were going to start to usurp their lands and come against them. How the Muslims were going to become weak and downtrodden. So one of the companions said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you advise us to do in that time? This time that the people are living right now. All of this fitting. Lack of knowledge. Many of the things about the hour being established. This is that time. Yom al Qiyamah is close, close. What do you advise us to do? He gave us the remedy. He gave us the remedy, the minhaj. He told the companions, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as Abdullah bin Umar, he narrated, Radiallahu Anhu, Amsik alayka lisanaka wa khud. Ma ta'rifu wa da' ma tunkiru wa alayka bi khasati amrik wa da' anka amr al amma. He told him these five things in one hadith. First thing, in the time of trial and tribulations, hold back your tongue. Don't be a person who talks too much. You have a fitna that's personal between you and your family, don't go out just spreading that news. You're just going to make it a bigger problem. That's specific. The general fitna, Palestine, other than Palestine, don't go out at the coffee shop making your opinion about what should be done, what shouldn't be done, what happened. Don't make, that makes the fitna spread even more. Second thing he told the people in this hadith is to take what you know is from Al-Islam and to abandon and avoid what you don't know is from Al-Islam. The things you know from the deen, do it. The things that you don't know that are not from the deen, leave them alone if it's not from the deen. Some Muslims in the fitna of Palestine, for an example, that just happened recently, and it's as if we've forgotten that like, that doesn't exist. And right now, those people are still suffering. But because the media had it in our eyes, we were reacting and we were very upset. Now the media put it under the table and we act like it doesn't exist right now. And they play with us. They play with us. It's the same fitna right now, right now. But for one reason or another, it's not on their agenda to bring it to our attention like that. Why have we become disengaged in that issue? The point. Back then when it was happening and the world was seeing what was going on, they got a glimpse, a small glimpse into what was going on. We had the Muslims telling us, let's go march, let's go protest, let's go do the candle vigils, three minutes of silence, and other than that. I'm a new Muslim, I'm a revert. I respect all of you people. You have long history in Islam. You've been Muslims forever, mashallah. I say to every revert, and I say to a Muslim in general, you young brothers, when people tell you, let's go do this, let's go do that, let's march, let's protest, say, where is the proof of that? Because the Prophet told me during the times of fitna, take what I know is from Islam and leave what 